I wanted to take an opportunity while I'm here at the range to discuss the evolution of tripods as they are used in the shooting disciplines. We've seen tripods become quite a critical piece of gear in precision rifle shooting competitions where they're used for both spotting optics as well as shooting off of with a rifle and for support, uh, rifle support uh, adaptive you know, for various other positions. We see them used by hunters in the field for shooting off of and tall brush as well as for their optics if they're just glassing the target area for whatever they're hunting. And we've also seen it being used by military. Uh, they've adopted the same techniques as in the civilian world for uh, using in their military applications. But let's go ahead and start off with where I started with um, as a photographer early on, like in the, uh, you know, I was doing some photography in the late 90s but in the mid-2000s, I started to get a little bit more serious with it, and I picked up this Manfrotto 055X Pro-B and with a 488 RC2 ball head. And so this is kind of like the de facto standard at the time in the 2000s with regards to a good, quality, durable tripod. This is a Manfrotto made in Italy. They're very well known in the photography community. It's your typical... Uh, aluminum tripod with lever locks which lever locks were kind of like the most common method basically you open a lever to extend or you know bring in the leg and this has kind of been the staple design and it's been this is was the most commonly used one in the mid 2000s i would say uh, in terms of the availability and just kind of the brand name so i had to bring up my notes here to refer to uh, off of the archive specs that I found for this design because this this tripod and ball head actually has been updated like they do still have the 055 X Pro B but it's been you know it's a different gen they've upgraded a few things but this one that from uh, the mid 2000s has a 15.4 load capacity with uh, and weighs 5.29 pounds for the legs itself but with the the ball head it's got a 17.64 pound load capacity with a 1.48 weight pound weight so combined it's about seven pounds total for this tripod and your effective load capacity is going to be about 15 pounds which isn't very good at all to support a rifle considering today's you know rifles are exceeding that especially in competition use where they're you know anywhere 20 pounds and up so i use this for quite some time and we'll have to cut an aside to the whole concept of the 488 RC2. It uses, it uses these RC2 plates made by Manfrotto. It's a proprietary design. You basically need an RC2 plate on your device, and then it would just go into the quarter 20 thread onto that, you know, that tripod socket of that camera or whatever it is. Then you would have that plate sitting there, and you can use that as a quick release on the clamp, right? And that means you would have to have RC2 clamps for everything that you wanted to put on this head. During the mid-2000s or late, late 2000s, I, I fell upon um, Arca Swiss. So there were L plates that I needed for my camera, and I don't think I have one on me right now, but I do have a my camera here, which has a, it does have an L plate, but I took the, the side off. But anyway, an L plate basically allowed you to mount the camera on a tripod. Then you can also mount it on the portrait, you know, portrait orientation because there would be another, you know, the, it would be an L plate, literally like shaped like an L, so you can have it on the bottom or the side. I needed that for just sort of quick portrait shooting and landscape stuff, and at the time, they didn't make L plates for RC2, and so I said, you know, let me get this new Arca Swiss L plate, and I needed to convert my, my clamp on my R488 RC2 ball head to use Arca, and Arca Swiss is basically a dovetail design. Um, Arca Swiss is the company, they designed this dovetail, and that's what Arca Swiss is kind of referring to. And so eventually what I ended up doing with my RC2 plate, I said, I went to really write stuff, found a clamp that would fit onto the ball stem of my 488 RC2 ball head, took the, the Manfrotto clamp off and put, in, put on this uh, really write stuff clamp, which is, I've had this for years, it's beat up and it still works. But I used this for quite some time until I finally realized, you know, I should probably invest into a better ball head at least. And um, so I, I went into, you know, I've always wanted the really right stuff BH55 ball head, which is what I have here. And it's a very stout ball head, but I also wanted, I guess I needed a new tripod to pair with it. And at the time, sometime in the early 2000, 2010s or whatever, 2010s, mid 2010s, I, I ended up getting the 488, or sorry, the 
really bright stuff BH55 and I paired it with this Enduro Git 204 carbon fiber tripod. Um, it's kind of just a made in China tripod, but uh, Enduro is well known in the photography community. Not as, probably not as prevalent as Manfrotto, but uh, still well known. And so I was running this for quite some time and this is the uh, Enduro Git 204. It's got a 44 pound load capacity and legs weigh 4.2 pounds combined with the BH55, which is a 50 pound load capacity and it weighs roughly 1.9 pounds. So total, this is 6.1 compared to seven pounds for this. So just about a pound lighter but significantly better load capacity, uh, all things considering. Uh, so 44 pounds for the legs, so we'll use that as our effective. 44 pound load capacity compared to the uh, 15 pound load capacity of the Manfrotto. And so I use this for quite some time, but what I end up not liking about this, uh, but well, let me, it uses lever locks, which is, I do like. So lever locks as opposed to, oh, sorry, twist locks as opposed to lever locks. This uses twist locks. So basically you're just twisting the the, uh, the locking mechanism to extend and retract, and uh, you can just turn it uh, the other way to tighten it up. This is a better design than lever locks. I've always said this because lever locks are more susceptible for temperature changes, dirt and whatnot, and over time you'll have to retension the lever locks because they wear out. These ones I had to retension every now every so often because sometimes they'll be very hard to close or sometimes they'll be very loose and they won't hold the leg in place with a load on the tripod. So I've always recommended people go to twist locks. Anyway, uh, I did, you know, after I acquired this tripod, I found that the, obviously the ball head was much better than my 488RC2, which is, you know, not all that great with the low capacity. But when we look at these lever locks here, sorry, these legs, even though it's a carbon fiber tripod and it's, it's supposed to be, you know, more stout, You'll notice that it is thinner if you compare it to other tripods. But I've also noticed that there's this camming action on the legs, and probably you can see it on camera. If I if I have my if I have my gun on here, and I was you know kind of putting torque one way or the other, you're going to see that this is very wobbly. And I did not appreciate this action, and I figured, you know what, eventually I need to get new legs, new tripods, a new tripod you know leg system. And I mean I've had an issue where the uh, actually the Lever, the twist lock failed at me one day at Camp Pendleton on the range. It just out of nowhere, I, I, I loosened it up, pulled it out, and the shims inside broke, like it came off, and so I had to repair it at home. Because apparently the shims are glued in, so this is not really a user serviceable tripod, um, unlike other tripods, like higher grade tripods where you can actually service them, you can get the parts for the inside of the twist locks. Anyway. I mean, this, this works for well for what it does. I think it's more, more suited for photography than it is for shooting and more for like observation glass. But I did run these for, you know, I've, I still have it and I still use it for other things, but obviously it left much to be desired. So eventually what I ended up doing is getting the next tripod. After I stepped up my game, as far as the ball head with the BH55, I decided, hey, I really need to just go ahead and invest in the quality full system in terms of the tripod legs themselves. So my next step up is the Really Rest Stuff TVC 22i tripod. And so I picked this up uh, mainly because I wanted something that was going to be solid to shoot off of. And this is really designed for competition rifle shooting, mainly because of the way they designed the legs. Number one, it's two segments, so it's faster to deploy. But what that also means is in order to get the height that you need when it's deployed, it doesn't collapse down very short. So I don't have, I didn't write down the specs, unfortunately, before I came here, but it's close to three feet extent, you know, collapsed. But the unique aspect of it is, is the legs are also inverted. What I mean is when you do the twist locks, it's the bottom legs that are actually on the outside of the top segment. What this means is that you have this added speed. So if you look, if you watch closely how I operate this tripod to deploy it, I'm basically gonna twist the locks, drop it down, turn the locks back, Un unloosen, Tighten, loosen, sorry, tighten. And that's where I'm at. If I wanna, if I wanna, you know, stow the tripod, all I'm gonna do is loosen the leg, tighten it back up, loosen, retract, tighten, loosen, retract, tighten. It, it, does, it seems very uh, basic, but let me show you what I'm doing with the standard tripod legs. If I'm gonna deploy, I'm going to loosen, pull, tighten, loosen, pull, tighten. Loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. So aside from the fact that I'm 
I'm moving multiple legs or, you know, segments. If you notice, I'm having to pull the leg down. I have to release, I have to take my hand off the, the twist lock, pull this leg down and then come back up. So I'm doing a couple of motions here to loosen each leg. Now, same thing goes when I want to retract it. So, you know, some people will, will loosen, then pull up, then meet it, loosen, pull up, then tighten, you know, going back to the, to the lever lock that's above. Or to speed it up, what you can do is just sometimes turn it upside down, let gravity assist you on this, but it's usually not, doesn't work that way. So that's where you see that, that speed difference in terms of deploying this specific tripod, the, the TVC-22i compared to a typical tripod. And that's why the TVC-22i is a little bit more desirable from a speed standpoint. And so what I am also doing with this is, rather than having my BH-55 on here, I figured, why don't I just get another head for it? And so I thought for a while, and I wanted to try the leveling base. So this is the TA, sorry, the TA, yeah, TA2USC leveling base. So what this does, it's not really a ball head. It does have a clamp on the leveling base. And so what you can do is just have 15 degrees down or 15 degrees up from, from level to adjust whatever object you have on here or device, and then you can lock it into place. It's a very stable platform, and I actually quite like it. But, uh, you know, obviously it doesn't have the full articulation if you need beyond 15 degrees um, from level, up or down. And uh, it's not really designed for full articulation because the leveling base is mainly for, you would actually have your ball head on top of the leveling base, not under the clamp, so that if you had, for example, the tripod in a weird position, like level, not unlevel ground, then you would level the leveling base, and then on top of that you would have your tripod, or sorry, your ball head, which you can pan or do whatever you want, but that's kind of what a leveling base is designed to do. It's not really meant for this application in terms of you're actually using the leveling base itself to adjust your the orientation of your of what you're looking at necessarily, but it does work. But I do like this. But after using this for a while and I you know appreciating it, I said you know what, I kind of want to get this stability and you know durability and quality into this smaller package. Before I forget. I should also mention the, the data for the TVC-22i. So it actually has a load capacity anywhere from 60 to 95 pounds, depending on how you have the legs oriented, because you can actually have a different angle, leg angle for these. So if you have it splayed out a little bit more for a wider footprint, it might have less load capacity. Anyway, it's 60 to 95 pounds. And then I don't know the load capacity of the leveling base, which is unfortunate, but I figure it's going to be probably around 50 pounds. So effectively, you're going to have a 50 pound load capacity. And as far as the weight, of this system, you're talking 4.28 for the legs and about one pound for under one pound for the leveling base. So that's a total of 5.3 roughly for this, which is actually about this. Oh yeah, it's about, I would say about 0.8 pounds lighter than this. It actually feels lighter when you hold it in your hand, but this is actually a pretty light system. Now going back to the fact that I wanted to get the TVC 22i ruggedness, durability, quality, just the, the whole package, but in the smaller traditional uh, collapsed uh, footprint, I ended up getting the really right stuff, TFCT 34 with the Anvil 30 ball head. So this, this the TFCT system from really right stuff has become the staple tripod now, along with the Anvil 30. Uh, it's become pretty predominant as far as the tripod to get for shooting disciplines. And it has your typical twist locks, which, and uh, you know, as far as twist locks and carbon fiber legs, which are a lot more stout, which I didn't point out with my TVC, or sorry, my TVC 22i and this Enduro, but you can kind of see that the legs are significantly thicker on the really right stuff tripods because they're using better carbon fiber. The uh, TFC TFC T34 has a load capacity of 50 to 85 pounds, depending on how you have the legs oriented. And the Anvil 30 has a 35 foot pound load capacity. So they do it based on torque, not based on weight, um, which is a better way to approach it, considering that you could have an imbalanced device. Let's say you have a, a rifle on here. Maybe the weight is more on the backside than the front or vice versa. And therefore, you, you're kind of more concerned about the torque, not necessarily what's the direct weight going down because your ball head could turn if the weight is imbalanced. So it's a nice, better way to look at in terms of the load capacity of these ball heads, or, you know, like this. 
Um, the weight, surprisingly, I it says 4.79. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be combined, um, but 4.79 for the TFC T34. And the Anvil 30 by itself is under just under a pound at 15.2 ounces. I think I remember I weighed this on a scale at home and it came out to 5.1. So I'm not sure where the disconnect is in terms of the specifications on the website, but it came out to 5.1. It's about, I would say they're about the same weight between these two. And that sounds right because this is 5.3. Um, but yeah, and I, I love the build quality of the TFC T34. It's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how, how nice it is. The Anvil 30, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Anvil 30, it uses a single lever to adjust the head itself. And so it just kind of turns in this manner. Once you lock it into place, or once you get your, 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 your device oriented the way you want, you simply just turn the lever. Um, it, this is nice for speed. However, I don't appreciate it for glassing. I prefer the traditional ball head for glassing because it's got more, finer controls. Um, the ball head to turn the, to, you just basically have this tension knob, adjust the, adjust the head and then tighten it down. And you also have two knobs to adjust tension. So I can have a little bit more, I can adjust the, the tension of the big knob simply by, you know, if I need, if I want it to a little bit more finer in terms of it takes a lot more pressure to move something, then I can adjust that accordingly on this, uh, this tension knob to tension the tensioner. <laughs> and, uh. It's a lot easier, it's a lot more intuitive and more, you know, it's got more control as opposed to the Anvil 30 because if you notice here, whenever the actual controls also move with the, with the plane of the, the device, so the whole clamp moves, right? And so it's not, if I wanted to adjust and point this way, I'm actually moving the controls to the opposite side of my body. You know, granted you won't do that, but if you, you can just over exaggerate like what this means. So I'm pointing that way, then I'm, my hand has to come around just to tighten it here as opposed to a traditional ball head where if I want to move, point the object that way, but my controls are still on my thumb here. So that's kind of why I feel like this is better for the ball heads, traditional ball heads better for glassing and the Anvil 30 should be reserved strictly for shooting if at all possible. So in summary, we have this evolution of going with the photography tripod that I've always had and then adapting it for shooting, then trying another photography tripod with a much better photography ball head and using that for shooting going to a very shooting specific built tripod and the Realize stuff soar tvc 22i system and then getting a similar build quality and quality control and just rugged you know robustness as this in a smaller package with another really right stuff soar tripod and the tfct 34 with the anvil 30 ball head I know a lot of people have been, you know, they're debating in terms of, do you go with real life stuff? Do you go with something kind of the older designs that are still, but are, you know, brand new in terms of their builds or what they're, you know, what's being manufactured out not right now, or going with kind of the other in between with other companies like Vortex, um, Athlon. Um, there's a bunch of other companies making tripods. Uh, Cause carbon fiber tripods now are kind of the norm, I would say you're pretty much going to go with one simply for weight savings. But the key thing here is looking at the quality of these tripods. And I'm not here to, to state whether or not the other competitors are just as good really or stuff, but I've seen just on the face of it, the diameter of their tubes that they're using seems on par with really right stuff. I haven't sat there with a, with a caliper or anything, but I really don't know the quality of carbon fiber. I have nothing. I don't know anything about carbon fiber. Like, well, I know very little, so I don't know what would make the, what carbon what makes really if really rare stuff is using good carbon fiber maybe they aren't but i assume they are but is their carbon fiber better than the other competitors I'm, i feel like it's better than this but is it better than the vortex is it better than an athlon tripod and whatnot i i really do not believe in aluminum these aluminum tripods anymore uh they are rugged though I, i've thrown this around i've dropped it it's it's fine in that manner but if you can get a twist lock aluminum tripod, I would go that route. I would not go lever locks simply because they're just way too chattery. It just, you can't rely on these um, very much because it, it will sort of semi fail on you and you'll have to readjust it later. Um, as far as the quality of twist locks, definitely like these made in China tripods, you gotta be careful how well they design their twist locks. Um, Cause this one was not, you know, not very good in terms of being used as serviceable compared to like a really rest stuff system. 
Anyway, if you're looking into tripods, I highly suggest just going straight up through Lyra stuff. I mean, going starting here didn't you know made sense for me only because I bought this for photography, and it worked well for photography. But the second I tried to adapt it for shooting with heavy loads, I should have just went directly to Lyra stuff and probably should have skipped like this in this enduro tripod. Maybe gone with the BH55 for sure, but going with a shooting specific or rather a really rough stuff. Uh, tripod leg system which is going to be better than this this generic i always say generic but this lesser quality of tripod leg a lot to think about though in terms of tripods for shooting so definitely do your research if you can um i know it's a big investment to spend fifteen hundred dollars on one of these tripods compared to like this was at the time was probably only 400 bucks total 300 bucks and uh these legs i got on sale for like 300 the head itself was 500 but you're getting tripods now for around 400 bucks for a you know basic carbon fiber tripod with a head so i mean compared to 1500 dollars, do you really want to spend that much and i agree that you know if you don't use tripods often then why why would you do that but if i think if you use tripods at all and you want the want it to work very well when you're using it then you should really consider making that investment and there's lots of ways to utilize tripods, which I have not discussed for uh, shooting applications, but you also need to look at, in, like, kind of research that, watch videos on, on you know, precision rifle shooting and hunting and whatnot, how they deploy tripods or employ tripods in certain situations. And you can see, okay, yeah, I, I see that this, you know, higher quality tripod will be maximized in these situations, which I could use, you know, you know, these techniques for these certain situations. So definitely look into that, and I think tripods are going to be a great investment in general if you want to step up in terms of what you're going to spend. Anyway, that's it for these this little video. I just wanted to kind of cover the evolution of the tripods, at least for me, and where this industry is going in terms of getting away from aluminum, going to carbon fiber, getting away from lever locks. I think lever locks are still found, but most people are using twist locks now, so that's kind of the evolution there. And then kind of where we are going with ball heads in terms of load capacity and whatnot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I've, as you can see, I've spent money on tripods, so I kind of know like where I sh thought I, sh I think I should have gone, like what regrets I have going, like buying this initially before going here. So definitely ask some questions, and I'll try to answer those, you know, without any sort of influence because I, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by real air stuff. I wish I was, but I, I spent my own money. On all this gear and i've made mistakes on my own with my own money buying certain things so i'll try to give you kind of an independent opinion on various things with regards to tripods